Welcome, welcome, welcome to Kickstarter Radio 102.4. I'm your host, Lipstick Paddy, and today we're looking at Anastar. Hmm, no, it calls itself an epic quest that you're going to save the world from a threat from Anastia, who's the Queen of Dragons. It calls it action packed, cooperative board game. You can play solo, but expect to play with at least two heroes and have one in reserve in case one gets slain. Yeah, it is got massive video game influences. Theme-wise, I've not got any idea. Some kind of, I don't know, mothballed, put-together, shambolic, uh, caveman, um, fantasy-ish? Question mark! I have no idea. <laughs> Game reminds me of the video game Golden Axe. Can you remember that, anybody? Well, I am um, born in the 70s. I remember Golden Axe, of course, an amazing side-scroller. Although I played it on the arcade, by the way. I put in 10 Ps in England to play that. Down at the video shop. Video shop, you know, the uh, VHS render, the blockbuster of the, the 80s, I guess, in the, in the UK. Anyway, peeps, woohoo! So, there's um, some sky side-scrolling map action going on here, which is, um, we shall see as we go down, as it's... I mean, the thing, my concern coming in here, other than the theme, is the epic quest thing, because I don't feel it's an epic quest. I mean, they have unlocked the campaign, um... But the campaign isn't, like, big story mode. It's more of you can now play all of the boards together now, linking them through your character developing and getting stronger and updating the cards to be better. Which does sound a lot better. But... Even with the campaign, the thing that stops it from being an epic quest at the minute is the amount of scrolling tiles, which we'll see when we go down the page. Now, Mythic Games, who probably should be up there in the Premier League of Kickstarters, they are, you know, part of the French Renaissance of amazing companies in France. Um, although they've not produced a game that I've wanted to back yet. They keep doing this kind of out the themes and stuff and I'm just not, <laughs> not gravitating to them. Not yet anyway, but I have been impressed and um, they do like to shove a lot of plastic your way, like Seamon, because they are... First and foremost, a miniature company, and uh, they are in the top echelons of minis. You can see here the bases are all constructed. They're using two different types of plastic, um, hard and soft, and um, yeah, and they've got some big minis and they've got good miniature design. Anyway, let's go down and talk about the gameplay as we start to see stuff. Art is a little bit. Comic book circa 1980 is what I want to put it as, and I'm not a fan of it, per se. Yeah. The board art, you can see this board art is kind of tall grass. It doesn't look good. I don't like this board. The board art is kind of hit or miss. It also has a has like a photorealism to it, as if it's been taken from a photograph from space, but it lacks detail. Um, yeah, so that's how I feel about the board art. The board art is hit and miss. Some of it looks great, like the lava stuff and things like that. Now, it says 90 minutes per game. That is if you're playing a scenario, though. And if you're playing campaign, go as long as you want. Oh. If you're playing the campaign, you can go as long as you want. Anyway. Nice dynamic minis here. 
And um, from the hero characters, the enemies are a bit like just standing here looking at you. <laughs> um, there is that. There is going to be a lot of dice chucking and card playing as well, which is nice. A mixture of, of them too. There is combos. You can save certain cards and play them to play a combo. Um, there are mounts that you can get as well, which are going to break up the monotony of the combat, of course. And the, I, I think if it's, got any, if, if it's got an inherent problem coming from a beat-em-up type video game, is that you've got spawning enemies before you can roll onto the next tile, which... You know, the reason side-scrolling enemy uh, video games have spawning mechanics is, is because the enemies they're putting in front of you, you are going to absolutely banish them from the play space with inside 30 seconds, especially in co-op. They're not going to last very long. So they spawn peeps in. But here, the, the, the time to actually dish out the damage and kill the minis could be like 20 minutes of gameplay and then you spawn more in it's like oh yeah so it almost it's like we're spawning things in here to kind of slow you down you know put the progression on a slow burn that's what it feels like you know that's that's how i feel about it anyway we just see this Brid character. I think Brid is the worst art for any of the hero characters. Just saying. I do like to criticise art as much as possible, don't I? I mean, it just doesn't stand up there against things like Isofurian Guard, Tenaris Adventures. No, it doesn't. All the other heroes do look nice enough. It's going to have exclusive stretch goals. Mm. It's going to have complete expansions. This is going to be really important because the, in order for it to go heroic, it needs more tiles. So you are going to be forced, I'm saying, to get this stuff. Complete expansion stretch goals. They're going to be paid expansions, I imagine. And um, if you do take a companion pledge or higher, you will get the $15 avatar miniature, which is beautiful. However, if you're late, if you're late pledging on one dollar pledging, it will cost fifteen dollars. This thing, so there is like a bonus to coming in here on a bigger pledge. Not mentioning time, you know. Not mentioning you're going to get it quick. Not mentioning if it's coming to retail. Uh, not mentioning if you're getting a cheaper price at retail. Um, Although, if it's coming to retail, I mean, if you look at other Mythic games, did they come to retail? Not all of them. And as Mythic games go, this is a big one. This is one of the big AAA, get all the team working on it, like, massive team working on it. Um, here we go. So, is it just a mini... I mean, it's a, it says it's a, um, the avatar becomes a formidable companion, so, yeah, it's a hero character, is it? I mean, you get a creature card or just a mini, but there's no, like, quest around this. I mean, when Madara had, like, a $15 mini expansion like this, they had it, like, a side quest, and it's a little bit, sh a bit of a shame. I mean, they're throwing it in for $15, but if there was, like, a, a side quest associated with this guy and he had his own, like, tile, that'd be a more value proposition. But, you know, when you're paying for a mini, you've got to ask yourself, is this mini going to be able to be used in my other games and RPGs? Well, this game's theme is so out there. No, you're not going to be using this in any other game. I mean, what the hell is it? <laughs> Stone Carrier. I mean, come on. Now, for example, the Valkyrie here. I say Valkyrie. She's got two shields and the horned helmet. Looks fantastic as a mini, but the art is worse. The other minis are interesting. I don't know what's going on with the purple guy here. It does have like a strange fantasy going on. And um, 
I do like the barbarian character. So it's coming in at 130 bucks, and my biggest problem here is you've only got nine double-sided tiles. Only nine, because that limits the adventure. Let's just have a swift tour, shall we? And see what other adventure games offered when it came to tiles, because tiles equals content. Let's roll the video. The Dark Quarter from Lucky Duck Games and Van Ryder Games. 44 location tiles and it's stretched five more out so far. This is total, total content. Massive. And you can get this all these locations for the low price of $59. It does have minis, of course, if we need to be fair. Uh, if you want minis, you're going up to 140 But you get loads of locations. Let's go to the next. Far Cry, that cancelled game, probably coming back. 20 double-sided boards, some of them linking together to make a bigger board. 115 euros for this one, all the content, of course, based on this. But did have expansions to push more locations, but that was the base pre pledge, and that was with minis. On to the next. Now, Paracle, 25 maps on this one, double-sided. Really big, too, with some additional super massive ones like the Colosseum you can just see here. This one is $100, though, when you get all this. Plus, you get all these standees, which is like, I think, 75 standees, which have amazing utility in role-playing games. Yeah. Tidal Blades... Yeah, 60 pages in the map book. Massive, absolutely massive, with a third book making the space even bigger. This is like next generation um, rotating on maps, and I wish we got this on this Kickstarter, but no sign of a third map interesting on this rotation tiles. That would be nice if you visited a shop or something like that that you could go to. But um, they don't seem to have a currency or shopping yet so far in the game. And just to be flippant, <laughs> Thunder Road had the side scrolling, but it only really had five roads. But that is a $50 pledge. Um, so, tiles means content. Let's go back. So, nine adventure tiles. It seems loose. It seems like limited, really limited. And if they're making you buy more boxes to get adventure tiles, not only is it a necessary thing to really push the content out, but, um, you know, it's a little bit... They should be stretching the tiles out, is what I feel. Because, you know, oh, 350 cards. Well, if you look at those other games, they've got 700 cards and they're around about the same price point. So, you know, um, when you just look at the other competition on the market at the minute, the, the, when you talk he epic campaigns, you need to have uh, lots of tiles. And here, nine tiles equivalent to 18 sides is the biggest concern of the game. Now, minis, there is quite a lot of copy-paste minis, and um, they are stretching it to kind of lose this. Instead of having ten, they're going to have five copied. Um, that kind of stuff. They're kind of up in the pledge because they've got these mounts, which have a... They have a, a unique feature, of course, which is your mini... Your hero mini has a separate mini of that that can jump on one of these mounts. So every mount in the game has a secondary mini and every hero has a secondary mini because you can ride these mounts in the gameplay. That's upping the cost big time. And I know Mythic love to do minis. I don't know why they've not done a standee version of this. Um, you know, like Pericle and got the pledge down a little bit. Um, and if it's like, oh no, 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 Mythic Games, we are plastic, we are miniatures, that is us, that's our brand. Well, 
you know, chip theory games who always kept doing chips, in the recent Kickstarter they started using minis for the first time. So, you know, don't, don't set yourself in stone. Have your, miniature, have your miniature side and then have your standee side and then you're guaranteed to go to retail with a standee side, aren't you? So, but, um, you know, there's no interest in that. This is the Solace expansion, which just looks like another mini. With interchangeable magnet back, so you can ride this dragon. It's interesting, isn't it? And, uh, you know, if you're a collector of dragons from games, this one's going to be, like, so good. And I'm guessing there's going to be questions. Can I, can I just... Uh, <laughs> Can I just buy the dragon, please? I, I, I want all the pledge to come in and buy the dragon. <laughs> but other than the fact that you can ride it, um, is there any content with this? It's just a dragon. Um, doesn't have his own tile. Doesn't have a side quest to get him. Um, well, it says, this cosmetic expansion replaces a cardboard component from the core box. So there you go. It is just updating a bit of card. You've got um, a cardboard flat representation of this dragon. That's disappointing, isn't it? So this is very, very cool to get. Indeed. Some of the um, baddies here looking cool. You know, they're up there with Games Workshop, people are saying, with the detail. And um, you can see the super fantastic painting they've done here to show off what you can get now so campaign has been updated with hero cards these are to update all the characters skills this is fantastic we'll have a look at this in the updates um, five alternate plastic minis fantastic more alternate Minis, fantastic. A new enemy card coming in. Now you'll see on this enemy card here, it's been painted, this card. And on all the playthroughs I've watched, they've been like... Um, like if you look at the horse here, the additional horse, it looks like an artistic. Now, I really don't like this stylized picture of the horse. And I think this is work in progress because the painted art looks phenomenal and I really hope the art across the whole enemy decks is painted in because this looks too prototypey and mythic being in the Premier League of Kickstarters. I have high expectations of what they're going to do and hopefully they will paint it in. Three alternate minis. These alts um, are really, really cool that they're doing this. It's kind of making everybody happy because no one likes copy-paste stuff. The mini on stilts. How cool does that look? Again, strange theme. Am I going to use that in another game? Probably not. <laughs> um, the High Father is an interesting character anyway. What's going on with the theme? So nice kind of goblin giant knoll, what are you? <laughs> I love the painting on his hammer though, it looks very cool. Behemoth, they say, he's called a behemoth with a big nose. So the dragon expansion, they're calling it a $40 dragon, aren't they always expensive? And there's a painting rendition done for you. There she is, that is the boss, Anastir, the Queen of the Dragons. Very cool um, picture and mini. Now they've got these terrain and you, you're probably going to be rubbing your hands and going, are we going to get 3D terrain? I think that is a potential, it's going to be a 3D terrain box for sure. You see, the tiles do get better. It's that first one just full of grass. Could it not get any better than just grass? I don't know. Like, I have, I have a stream of water going through it or something. A swampy, pondy or something. Just Not just grass. Um, hopefully, they'll do an update showing you the features. Because if you watch the Kickstarter video, you get to see, like six of these tiles, maybe eight of these tiles within like two seconds of video. 
So yeah, this is talking about the river, the side-scrolling nature of it, and it's pretty much just like opening a book, isn't it? Now, the way these tiles have been designed, and they've got this funky edge to them, um, that kind of negates the fact that there could be a shop or something. So I think the shop's going to have to be like a caravan or something, but I really hope that is a thing. Here we've got, we got these, the card art, which looks too prototype, and hopefully that does get painted in. You can see the spawn of enemies coming in. Yeah. Oh no, we've still got more coming. It is, it is good though. Dice, I do like the dice rolling. You've got a little bit of dice mitigation. I wish you got a bit more dice manipulation. You've got a token that you can use per round and it's a little bit... Mm. Um, as you're doing stuff though, um, you are leveling up your fury, which is like your ultimate ability. And once that gets powered up, you're like the boss. You like throw yourself in to uh, activate this nuclear missile that you're going to put off. Um, there's an example here of... Um, Whirlwind, perhaps? Do we get to see that? Anyway, it might be the video at the top. Uh, Taming the Beast. Again, the card art here is, I hope, prototype. It needs to be painted in with the world behind it and all that good stuff. Swap the minis out. So, yeah, it's a nice little innovation going on. Um, so yeah, maxed out the fury this warrior, and uh, rolling four dice, and get ready, bang! You know, it's like epic. It is a whirlwind that gets launched. I'm excited in the campaign if they're getting new ultimate abilities, and um, they have suggested that some of these abilities might be able to be combined with the other players, so that's kind of like a, a super super. But if you're playing Golden Axe, you got to a point where it was like, there was one character in Golden Axe, you didn't want to use your ultimate at all, and you saved it for the boss because it was so powerful, and that's how you defeated the boss with this character. So um, I hope something like that doesn't happen here, where you're not willing to nuke it out. Just sit sit on the fury until uh, the boss comes out. Yeah, they have this nice grapple on the dice, which um, it's, gr it's grapple or push. I like the push effect. It has a knockdown, it looks like, on uh, the other character. That you hit. There's the avatar. Um, so yeah, what's in the box? Is it like a bit more detail here? I don't think I'm going to be rolling scenarios. It's going to be the campaign I'm going to be interested in. It does suggest caravan items here. So hopefully there is like this shop thing going on and hopefully there's more items that get unlocked and stuff. I love to have loads of stuff like that. Because if this turns out to be like, we're going to give you more tiles, the adventure's getting bigger, we're getting more items that we can get to level up our character and we're getting more quests cards and we're getting more items to shop. It's going to be like, ooh, this game's getting good, isn't it? Because without the campaign, it's as good as Castles of Greyskull, He-Man, that Simon did. Just loads of scenarios that you're fighting over. Just it, totally uninspired. But as soon as you've got a ca campaign pushing all your tiles together, it then goes to the next step, doesn't it? That's what we've got here. Brid, I hope there's another pass on her art. Uh, just is the... needs, a de needs an update. The others look better. Daughter of the Wind wearing absolutely hardly anything. <laughs> She's kind of my favorite character, actually. She's a shaman, and I like the fact that there's magic in the game. I do love Shadow. Also, this big lady here is also a priestess. I like this. And, um, yeah. Alright, so 
Heroes, solid. I don't particularly want any more heroes. I just want more content. I think if you stick with these heroes, you can um, double down on adding more cards that they can have and stuff like that. I think if you have more heroes, it might thin out the role-playing that you've, you've created in the campaign. That's how I feel about it. But each, each person has their own combos and um, their fury, so that makes them. They've got their own special ability and um, um, they've got like um, combat, which is the red dies. You've got defense die rolls and you've got this kind of green one, which is like wind or magic. Um, you need to do that for catching mounts and things like that. You got, then you've got movement and um, I don't want that. I think that's the size of you, that one at the far right. Because if you get a mount, you go up to size two, you're much bigger and harder to hit. So adventure tiles, please give me more, give me more. Got this weird top and bottom. The volcano stuff looks tremendous, doesn't it? But hopefully they've got more of these. Cards looking sweet. I like the um, event cards. They're all based in the world and stuff. We need a deep dive on these cards or um, an interesting playthrough mid-campaign just to see more of them, I guess. And, um, yeah, the injuries are interesting too. Would be interesting to get more graphic detail of the injuries because the world seems to be a little bit dark and I'd love to see what it looks like if you're you know, got a certain injury. It does say quest cards are going to add immersion here. We've got a um, quest card here. It's a lot of lore coming out of here. And hopefully the, the campaign gets to flesh it out further because it is setting its own world design, isn't it? All right. The caravan, want to know more. We want more caravan. Um, various tokens and standees. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a terrain pack. And uh, the boss has their own board and event decks and stuff like this. Oh yeah, there is a little bit of a concern. It's these event decks. And um, it works like a timer in the game. And um, I don't really like the fact there's a timer. I mean, the timer is in video games because it wanted you to put more money in if he was being poo-poo. So I don't know why they put a timer in. And in fact, I'll probably just take it out. <laughs> Once the last event card turns up, just there's no more events. You just fight into the death. That's probably how that roll with it. Um, yeah, so getting more minutes, it's kind of like an interesting th world design that they're showing, isn't it? Certainly not going to cat criticise the minis that much. These peeps are like up the top of the table, aren't they? With the minis, I like the slaughter. I think he's like, look at he's like studying you. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how these fanatics turn out. Fantastic, and um, you're certainly going to have minis that don't look like anything else you've got in your collection, so it's going to have a super unique design to it. And uh, you've got mini bosses and you've got bosses that you can take out and it all looks lovely. And there she is, the end boss, the Anastir. Must be pretty hot in this place, no one's wearing much clothing, are they? There you go, two types of minis, fantastic sculpted bases, fantastic mag magnetic um, riders. This is another innovation, very good, and big scale to show the kind of drama that you're facing. This is going to be cool on the table, isn't it? Yeah, it's interesting, they've got these Brutosaurs that have come, you know, Battle of Azeroth, World of Warcraft, these things. <laughs> They're obviously fans of that, and... Um, 
That'd be epic. Is this the caravan? Like, are they going to have an expansion where they've got the Brutosaur as a caravan? That'd be such a cool mini, and I would be down for that if there's a Brutosaur mini expansion. And it's the caravan. I'm like, I'm coming on board, Mythic. You've got me by the balls, baby, because that is a spectacular dinosaur mini, if you can get it. And it's an ode to World of Warcraft, one of my favourite video games ever. By the way, new expansion announced. Dragon Isles. And all that good stuff, so. More lore to sink your teeth into. It's a nice world building we've got. And, um. Now, these videos, they've actually got their own videos, which you've got Sam Healy playing on them. That's a really fun one, because, you know, if you know Sam. He works now for Mythic. I like his playthroughs. So. Oh, here we go. Sam and JT. They get absolutely obliterated. Because <laughs> it's hard. And you kind of see the card. The time limit is a bit of a pain. And you'll see the spawning mechanic can be a little bit of a... Again, it kind of slows down the pace. These are just concerns that... Um, they're going to make the evening longer because of the spawning stuff. Anyway, there's the massive AAA team on it. It's absolutely huge. And Mythic are that big. They've got four people working in the communication team. It's not just Sam Healy. There's four of them there. So, yeah, it's a really big-ass team to pull this off. Now, shipping is certainly a concern, and even from the United States, it's 37. And Mythic, please talk to Lucky Duck Games. You teamed up with them to do Legends. Um, it had to change its name, didn't it, because of the Joan of Arc license. But you were working with Lucky Duck, and can you not get Lucky Duck shipping for worldwide shipping? Because even the US price would come down if Lucky Duck get on top of it. I think that's something Mythic can do, is collab up with the French pit friends at Lucky Duck. That'd be fantastic if they do, because um, if these prices come down, you'll get more people pledging. And of course, if you've got more expansions coming on and the boxes are getting bigger and Mythic are known for doing like giant boxes that deliver at your house the size that you've got a washing machine getting delivered in your house. Something you can't hide from the wife. <laughs> and it's going to take up a massive amount of shelves. So, you know, shipping is going to be like, what are you talking about? Um, talking about fees aren't going to be paid because they've got um, fulfillment centers in these countries and stuff like this. All right, there we go, peeps. I want to look at this... Um, if you pardon me with this longer video, I want to go to this first update. Dun, 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 dun. More slaughterers, more horses, my world on fire. Yeah, campaign's going to have 80 upgrade cards, which is going to be for your characters. And um, it says new caravan loot cards to make you stronger, also. This is very good. And um, there she is, the one that I'm just not happy with her character. Brid. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, this is the one where it's role playing and uh, all that stuff. It doesn't want to mention too much about how the story is going, but it does say you're going to get a campaign booklet. And that is like, we'll let you know maybe later, so we need to know more of that. Quick FAQ. English and French at the minute, they're, um, they can't, you know, that's what they're saying. Minis are pre assembled, of course, and all that good stuff. I'll tell you something, there is going to be one stretch goal that has been hinted at, and that is a vertical screen. Let's go down to what it looks like on the table. A vertical screen, so when you're actually playing, um, making me 
you dizzy this. When you're actually playing like this, you've got a vertical screen at the back just to give it a backdrop. That'd be fantastic if they got a backdrop, but come on, peeps. We've got more tiles going on. <laughs> if you got a vertical back screen, though, that would definitely make this game look like none other. But, um, yeah. So, a little concern going in here is the card art being... Um, prototyping and hopefully they do get filled in with the gorgeous art of the world and um, I want to see how the caravan works and if it's a Brutus or mini I'm coming in for it baby that will be fantastic I'm talking about that massive brontosaur dinosaur you can see it in the video and it's down below amazing stuff peeps well I think Anastar potentially is going to be Kickstarter of the week, and that includes Game Found. I did look at Sleeping Gods, that thing, um, which is like near and far 2.0. Put scratch splash screen up here, please, editor. And if you want to check out that, um, but yeah, Anastar, what do you think of this beast? It's going to get bigger, isn't it? And uh, I'm going to have to come back and do a final thoughts on it. But um, at the minute, do we recommend it? We actually do recommend it. I think it's interesting game mechanic. You do definitely feel powerful. It's nice and simple, not too heavy. And as a miniature game, the action is fast. You've got to remind yourself that there is that timer mechanic, though, if you're too slow. And there's the fact that you expect a hero to die and then bring another one in. It has like a... A reserve player that can come in. I mean, if you look at the box here, they've got the art of the Valkyrie with the two shields. I like that face better than the face they've got on the art. It's like a redhead. She's blonde there on the box. So make an update to her character, please. That's what I want to see. Anyway. Um, yeah, so if you want like an arcade combat um, rotating screens on a campaign and you hate heroes getting stronger and all that stuff, it does sound juicy. And I think they are trying to design their own world building here. So potentially this might get further content because there's an end boss, of course, here, but doesn't suggest there couldn't be any, a bigger um, campaign in a few years and stuff. Because if this IP gets popular, um, hopefully we'll get to see more. But at the minute, it's only sitting with two and, two and a bit backers it's because this week's gone crazy and on game phone they have no idea of cadencing out projects and it's just nuclear bombs hit game phone today there's too much stuff on there to cover this week but glad to see anastia here on kickstarter and um hopefully it will go bigger and bigger and bigger in this um, they always love to do these micro 16 days what about a 30 day a mythic because um I don't know, they just like to do quick ones here. They did, they've been doing dailies on their recent Kickstarters, but they're just going for stretch goals here. We might see some dailies knock out halfway through. So there might be some surprises to come. And uh, this is one for sure I'm coming back covering final thoughts because I think it can do a little bit more to force me to back it, peeps. But um, yeah, I want to see more of the shop. I want to see more tiles, of course. And I don't want to see more heroes. I want to see more hero abilities, if anything. So Anastia, absolutely looking stupendous, and um, yeah, if because if they can just get rid of the amount of time enemies that are spawning, you can put the time down to you know so it's not as long as it should be. Anyway, <laughs> Anastia, let me know what you think in in the comments, peeps. Are you happy with what you're seeing here? Do you want to see more? Is there anything in particular you want to see from this Kickstarter? in where, where you need it to do something where you'll back it. Maybe it's the shipping. Shipping is another concern. Get onto Lucky Duck Gaming, Mythic. You can do it. You've had, you've, you collabed up with them in the past, so all that good stuff. Anyway, this has been uh, Kickstarter Radio 102.4. I've been your host, Lipstick Paddy. Please check out our broadcast. It's our radio podcast where we talk about Kickstarter and play loads of cool music. That's every Sunday. You can check out our latest issue in the video description. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. You take us, stay safe, and bye-bye for now.